what are you doing right now? Like, what were you doing before I interrupted you? So what I was doing is I was going through my, um, I was like basically doing some maintenance. So because I'm promoting my newsletter, WillieJames.net, um, I was thinking like, okay, well, how can I make this a very thorough newsletter? And part of that means like going through everything, going through the about page, going through the like when people sign up and like the email that, that they get the um all these all, like every aspect of it i want it to be like you know well done so i've been going through that and i've been um you know doing some web stuff so the the video that i did with rick seaback i went back and i changed the thumbnail to something that was like a lot more um eye, eye appealing um visually catchy um and then i also boosted that post um i submitted it to facebook so they gotta approve it and then it's gonna be boosted but yeah, so I'm, I'm doing some things that I normally don't do, which is like figuring out how to like better maintain a social media presence and like going full force on that. So that's just what I've been doing this afternoon. Hi, my name is Brian Crawford with pghmuseums.org, and over the next several weeks, I'll be talking with artists, museum directors, and even the general manager of a professional sports team. Due to the COVID-19 coronavirus, we'll be practicing social distancing and speaking over video and talking about how the virus is affecting the people who make our culture community work. We'll be discussing how it's affecting their lives, how they're staying creative, overcoming challenges, and how they plan to bounce back when we can all leave our homes again. Please join me for COVID Conversations. I'm with Willie James, Brian Crawford here at pghmuseums.org. COVID Conversations, is this like a good time to learn new skills because you can't go anywhere? It's the one of the best times ever. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let me correct that. I don't know if it's the best time ever um, because there is a stress component that a lot of people are experiencing. And so they're, they're dealing with this new stress of a pandemic happening at the same time. They have other parts of their life that they have to cater to. So like their, their financial life, their, their, um, what they're going to do career wise. Cause a lot of people have been laid off. So I'm not sure if like this is the best time to be learning, but it is a time to be learning. So I think, if people use their time very productively, they could learn a lot. I've been learning Italian for about a year now, and you know I'm still staying on top of it. A little bit less, actually, in the past few weeks because like I've gotten much more productive on my work stuff. Um, the the it's been more of a challenge to actually focus on the language learning, but I'm still language learning. So I try to get a little bit every day and maintain that practice. Yeah, and you really inspired me. You put out that video with, with you and Rick, and, and I've, I've been in a funk, and you know, I credit you for pulling me out of the funk and kicking my ass and getting, getting me get in gear again. And that video really inspired me because I, I don't know, it's just, it just kind of like, oh, what can you do from home? And then I saw that, and I'm like, yeah, you know, there are things I, I can do. Uh, I've got some other cool uh, ideas that I'm going to be putting out, hopefully, as long as the weather stays nice and stuff like that. But uh, you've been pretty busy. You haven't slowed down at all because yeah. of the whole situation, right? I've actually sped up quite a bit. And I think, like, a large part of it is just, like, realizing, like, wait, I could be doing so much more. And, like, sometimes it's those little actions. So, like realizing that oh wait a minute i don't really go back into my old content and see how i can like repurpose it i don't look at my newsletter and think okay how can i make it even more thorough so i've been doing things differently but additionally to that as you know me and you have talked about before I, i've been officially diagnosed with adhd and it hadn't like you know I've, I've sort of thought that i had adhd for the past few years and then like Last year was definitely a confirmation, especially towards the later half of it of like, wow, you know, I do have ADHD and it's affecting every single part of my life, um, whether I like it or not. So figuring out the best treatment for that was important. You know, I've been going, I've been to, you know, my therapist for over three years and um, I've had um, you know, a lot of revelations through that, but also I realized that there's a, a medication a component to having ADHD, and it's actually shown to be one of the most effective uh, co combinations, cognitive behavioral therapy and, and also uh, medication, uh, whether that's non-stimulant or stimulant medication. 
I realized like it's a, it's a very important thing to be on top of. So I've, I've, I've thankfully been able to um, get a little bit more of a grip on that. And I, I'm happy to like be much more focused now because of it. Yeah, it does make a big difference. I, I so I, I kind of am late to the game. I knew I had ADD um, from when I was younger, but I kind of like ignored it. So I, I also have Tourette's syndrome and the Ritalin I felt made my tics worse. And so I was kind of like, I was really like uncomfortable with, with TS at the time. So I kind of just stopped taking any medication at all. And then it wasn't until this year that I started addressing it as well. And it does make a huge difference as far as just being able to be productive. And I think it's makes more of a difference in getting done with getting the boring stuff done. That's yeah. where the the medication and stuff like that really comes into play. As far as like going out and creating a product, like I did talk radio for years with the River's Edge, and I had no problem putting anything out like that because it's live, it's fun, it's something that like I'm passionate about, and it, it really mm-hmm. suits my skill sets. But like you know, now with this project, I'm trying to do a lot of the business stuff and to like sit down and put together bylaws and contact exams, cold calling and things like that. It's just like, I, I know I have to do it and I'll just sit there and I'll keep telling myself, right, let's go do this. Let's go do this. And it's not like I'm, it's weird. It's, it's, it's a procrastination, but it's actually not a procrastination. And, and I'm sure you can understand that you're just not doing it and you're knowing that you need to do it and you're not thinking of any reasons not to do it. You're just not doing it. Exactly. <laughs> A lot of people think that, oh, well, we all have ADHD. And that's such a big misconception because we don't all have ADHD. Um, a certain amount of our population does. And the, it, it has absolutely nothing to do with laziness. It's, like, it's not procrastination exactly because um, ADHD people are some of the most active people that I know. You know, mm-hmm. like constantly doing stuff, always making things, always like connecting with others and everything else. And the the thing about it is just like the inability to do like you said the boring stuff doing some of the things that are like a lot less stimulating the things that you know you have to do but for some reason it's not connecting correctly and like we've known adhd with was a thing for like over 100 years like i think like actually in the 1800s that it was first described that oh wait some people have an attention um problem and this is what it what we think it is. And, you know, over time we've become much more um, knowledgeable about what it is. And ADHD is actually the most researched psychiatric condition on the planet. They're, they're, the, the amount of knowledge that we have on that and the, how fixable it really is, uh, I wouldn't say like fixable, I would say treatable. It's like one of the most treatable psychiatric things that you can have. Um, but, you know, people always think that oh, well, don't we all have it? Because, you know, some I can relate to that. I can relate to not putting things out. But you don't realize, like, the difference in having those, what's called, like, the executive functions. So, like, the, the ability to manage time, the ability to do the things that you need to do, but you don't necessarily find stimulating. All those things are, like, these are huge differences, you know, the fact that um, I think the statistic is something like 90 to 95% of everybody who has ADHD who makes it to college doesn't finish college unless it, they get treatment for it. So that's a alarming statistic if I've ever seen one, which shows that, you know, a lot of people will the joke, oh, I think I have ADHD, I think I have ADHD. It's like, if you think you really do, you should probably get it checked out because there's very big consequences to not having that thing unlocked. Yeah, and and it's not like it's a thing where you're just like, you're deciding like, oh, you know, I don't feel like, I don't know, grocery shopping, so I'm going to have it ordered in from, you know, that's not ADHD. It's like, like I need to fill out my taxes, but I am doing a million other things. It's not like I'm sitting there on the couch, I'm working my my ass off doing a million things, but that thing that has a deadline on it, I'm just doing because it just isn't important to me. In a way. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, even though I'm going to get money back, it's not like I'm even like avoiding it because I owe it. But like, that's a good example of uh, not being able to get something done because it's, like, it's just not, like you said, it's not stimulating. So it's just not something that you're focusing on. Your mind's just focusing on the things that matter to you, I guess, or the things that are in the front of your head and, and it's hard to prioritize things that need to be done uh, because of that condition. If that makes sense. Absolutely. 
and that's that's such a great example you know it was just like that something that 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 needs to be done you know it and it might even be in your best interest it probably is in your best interest to do the things that you need to do but uh the ability to actually do that is significantly different for people with ADHD. And I, I'm sure you can relate to like, you know, just every single day looking kind of similar of like, Oh, I need to do that. 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 It's like yeah. we can be in our heads constantly and not to mention like, so that's one component of it. The other component of it is people with ADHD are, are susceptible to mind rumination. So like just the thoughts just swirling, you know, and it repeating over and over and over again. Yeah. You know, the, um, the comorbid disorders that come with that, you know, mm -hmm. because if ADHD goes untreated for too long, then it's fully possible to develop anxiety disorders, to develop um, like just, a whole wide range of things you know it's just like it's best to if you think you have it to seek treatment for it i think or talk to your doctor about it just because like i i realized the implication of me not having that sorted out and i thought it sucked i i really i hated that you know like now that i made that realization that i have adhd i'm like wow so much more that i could be doing so much more that i can be accomplishing i can mm -hmm. actually like focus on the things like you're saying, the things that are sometimes a little bit more boring, the maintenance things. Now I'm able to go back and say, oh, you know what? I want to change that thumbnail. I'm going to make that thumbnail better. I'm going to yeah. change the way the wording is. I'm going to make that wording better because all the small things actually matter and they add up over time. You know, like I'm so, I'm so grateful to that we were able to recognize what ADHD is and also seek treatment for it. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. Yeah, it's definitely made a big difference in my life. And it's funny because like other people who, who don't have it don't really understand because their, their brain isn't wired the same way. And like I always look at like, you know, my dad and I where he's always like, he's good at that, that stuff, the stuff that needs to get done. And like, he'll like, like I had a car that needed cleaned out and towed away. And like every time he'd see me, he's like, did you get that taken care of? Did you get that taken care of? I'm like, no, no, no. Meanwhile, I was running around doing a million things. It would have only taken me minutes to do that. But it just, for some reason, I just could not bring myself to go and, and take care of that situation. And now, yeah, since I've been on the medication, you're right. It's like everything is like quick. I can just keep up on things and, and it does make a big difference. So. Exactly. You know, it's like, um, the, the, the misconception is, is always that ADHD people are lazy or they procrastinate. And it's like, it's not true in the slightest. It's that it's the opposite of that. And so the, to, to me, um, you know, it, it's such a big important thing also because of genetics, because if you have kids, I think it's like something between 40 to 50% of you passing ADHD onto your kids. So it's a highly like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. spread it like it spreads through your DNA very well. And also if you have it, then the chances of one of your parents having it is 50% which is ridiculously high. So like, imagine if you have like, you know, your grandfather had it, if your father had it, you have it. Like there's a, a lot of things that people with ADHD are capable of like, just like getting into or like mismanaging and everything else. And if it goes untreated for that many generations, there's a lot of um, unneeded, I would say, suffering that's going to be a, a result of that because of the lack of knowledge around what's actually, you know, guiding a lot of the decisions being made. If you don't have the same ability to calculate time and also make decisions the same way as everybody else, which is caused by like a delay in the development, like I think it happens around like the age of like seven or something, like part of the brain develops that those executive functions, I'm not sure the exact timeline on it, but the everybody else develops it and the people with ADHD has a slight delay. So even though it's slight, it makes a very big difference, especially over time. So mm -hmm. it, to me, there's like no excuse to not figure out like, okay, do I have ADHD and how much is it impairing me compared to maybe my peers or compared to like the averages. Um, and then from there, talk to talking to like a doctor and saying like, Hey, you know, I think I might have this, because like, there's like no reason if, if it really is impairing somebody's life that they shouldn't seek treatment for it. You know, I think there's a lot of uh, stigma around getting help 
um, mentally. And to me, that's just silly because that's what your life is. You know, you're not necessarily, you're not like, you're not just a physical thing. Like you're experiencing a mental world as well. And you're operating based off of the things that you have, like the ability to operate with your brain has a limited amount of things that it's able to do. And that's true for everyone. And for ADHD, it really is, it has a different cognitive um, um, layout. So I think it's like so important to just like seek help and help people like realize just like, Hey, you know, it's, it's fine. There's a lot of people with ADHD. I'm in very good company. You know, I have ADHD. You have ADHD. Um, I have a lot of friends who are high achieving and they have ADHD. There's like a lot of celebrities who have it. So it's like, there's no shame in the game. I think it's just, you know, important to, to get sorted out. Yeah. And there's also no shame in taking a commercial break. We're going to take one right now. Get to know Salzburg on a personal level at the Rebecca B. Haddon Stonehouse Museum. Operated by the Salzburg Area Historical Society, the Stonehouse displays, collects, and preserves a variety of items that bring the history of Salzburg to life. Its expanded edition makes room for medical supplies, industry innovations in kerosene and salt springs, and much more. To learn more about the expansion, we spoke to local Salzburg historian and engineer Jack McGuire. We have two additions at the back of the original stone house. The original structure was built in 1830. And in, I believe it was in the 1970s, we built the first edition. And I, I just tried to keep in mind the old structure, not have anything that looks too contrasting to it that. It's just a one-story addition that we put on the back. It's not two-story like the original structure. Immerse yourself in Salzburg culture and learn how this now small town on the edge of Indiana County has had such a major impact on this region. Find out more at Rebecca B. Haddon, shm.com. We're back with Willie James, filmmaker. We were talking about ADHD and Willie have to ask, how has the disorder affected your work creatively? What, what do you think has made has it affected you in any way uh, that makes you unique or do you think it's just an obstacle that you have to deal with? I think ADHD has both helped me and screwed me up in a lot of different ways because I would say it's, it's helped me because it's, it's, it's allowed me to really develop range. So knowing a lot of different people seeking out a lot of different like activities for me to be involved in, um, like having an open mindset. I'm not sure if the openness that I have is a part of ADHD, but I will say a lot of the drive and the desire to like do something different, that might be a part of it. So I think that's helped me with that. Um, the, I would say the downside would definitely be the, the lack of uh, preparedness on a lot of different things. The, um, it's, it screwed me up in like procrastinate or like procrastinating on a lot of different things just in the past few years, things mm -hmm. that I could have gotten done. I didn't get done in a timely manner. And to me, that's like so shameful and I can easily get caught into that pattern of like, Oh, I need to do this freelance project, but. I mean, I want to do this personal project, but before I do this personal project, I have to do this freelance project. And oh yeah, you know, I've I delayed delayed it by a week already, and so by the time that um, I get around to this personal project, it won't be relevant. And then like the then I delay more and delay more and delay more, and it's like such a nasty mindset to be in of just like continual avoidance and delays. So that's the way it really screwed me up. Is just like putting me through that that cycle of like feeling like oh I'm never going to be on top of everything I'm always going to be behind it and it's it's a horrible feeling because it's like not actually achieving things I saw this one picture of um uh it showed like what ADHD looks like with and without medication for this particular person who's sharing it. And, you know, it shows like a, a, a task list and there's like three, three different slides. So it shows like a task list. It says like eighty um, me, me with ADHD without medication or I mean, or with medication um, on a good day. And it shows like a lot of the tasks being checked off. And then it shows me, um, 
uh, on ADHD uh, medication and having a bad day and it shows like one or two tasks checked off. And then me with ADHD without medication and it just shows like the list is just like destroyed. There's not even, there's not even a checklist to begin with. So like that's kind of how I would describe my experience has sort of been of like when I don't have that medication, when I don't have like that, that it's much more difficult to be an organized person when you do not have the same cognitive function as everybody else. So now that um, I've, I've been able to like tackle that part, I feel like it's much easier for me to at least get something done. So it doesn't matter if it's a small thing. It doesn't matter. Like, it, as long as I'm achieving more I've, and I'm moving forward, I feel great. And I've been able to like, I, I just like yesterday, last night, it was like 1 a.m. What I decided to do is like take all the bills that I have that are recurring that are every month. And then I put them on like a, um, a list. So it's like, so on the calendar, it's like, okay, on the 13th, this bill is going to happen every month. On the 19th, this bill is going to recur recur. Um, this is a one-time bill, but I think it's going to be on the 17th. You know, like that way I can see it coming far ahead of time. And for me to do that was really easy because now I feel like I have the momentum. Now that I have the momentum of, oh yeah, I can be an organized person. I can, I can do this. Now it's much easier for me to implement those strategies at a much faster rate, at a, at a much more, in a much more effective way. And to me, that's a big, difference in my life has it helped you has it changed anything creatively like has add affected your work creatively i guess that was more like what i was interested in um as far as like because i feel like in some ways like i look at like my show i couldn't do a show on like when i did the the talk show i couldn't do a show on politics it was more like diverse and i feel like i have like so many interests that are like colliding and I feel like even when I do put together something, it's very fast paced and, and there's a lot of moving parts. And I almost wonder if that's attributed to that in any way. I, yeah. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are. And like, cause I, I see like some of your work and I feel like it, it, a lot of it is very like fast moving and it's, it's, um, it's very unique in a, in a lot of ways in a good way. And I'm just wondering, do you think that that traces back to that at all? Or, is, or do you think it's not related? That's a great question. I'm not sure at this moment because like my style has remained a little bit the same. I'd say I have deviated a little bit from it because of my ability to focus on like, oh, I don't need to be stuck in one way. I can do it a different way. And meditation also helps with this. So like it's much easier to detach from concepts, detach from patterns and just like create new ones. Um, so I'm not sure how ADHD is like impacting the, the way my work, it, you know, goes out the process, mm -hmm. everything else. I would say that the, I would say like, there is a little bit of like create, like of that creative direction within the ADHD, maybe a little bit. I am a lot less likely to be, um, with the medication, I'm a lot less likely to be impulsive in the direction that I go in. I try to, now I'm becoming much more like consolidated in terms of like, this is how I want it to look. And this is, if, if, if it falls out of that, then I am going to exit or I'm going to figure out some kind of way to make it fit in this format. So I would say that, yeah, only through organization, yes, it has, has been impacting my work. Um, both with and without the medication. And it can look a little bit differently because without the medication, things are a lot less consolidated and a lot more of the spontaneity is there. Um, but the sponta spontaneity is also part of my character. So there will be an element of that there, even with the medication. So yeah, I would say that there is ADHD. And, like, it, it is impacting the way the creative process goes about. Mm -hmm. And the, I guess the, the fast pacedness, the maybe not even the fast pacedness. I just like things that are a little bit more stimulating. And like, I'm like, Oh, if but I don't like you think that might be related to ADHD. 
See, that's what I'm wondering. So, because the other thing is like social media loves fast paced moving things. Um, but then again, come to think of it, there's a lot of slow moving things that are very popular on social media. So, I mean, it might've been through my own misconception that I went through that direction. And, but also people liked it um, since the very beginning of like, hey, you know, I like this. There's always, there's always something moving. There's always something stimulating. So I wonder, so it's got to take me a little bit more thought to like really think about how ADHD is like impacting the, the full creative product because it's all still developing for me. Yeah. So we've all been stuck inside uh, and doing things and obviously you've been taking full advantage of it, but um, have, there been any, have there been any struggles dealing with this stay at home order? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like it's a lot more difficult to get out there and record the, the Pittsburgh sleep podcast I have, Pittsburgh sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, because I feel a lot less tempted to approach anybody with a microphone. Like I, I can go out and I can record the sounds obviously. And I'll probably do that sometime in the, like the next few days. But with the, this, the, the, um, there's a, like a certain damper on the mood when I look outside and it's like very empty out. And sometimes like just the lack of company also kind of um, impacts me in a way where it's like, although it's like a temporary emotion, like it'll come over me for a short amount of time. It's like a visitor who's like just in town, ta- like in town for like a few hours. And then that emotion leaves because the, the, the emotion is not something that's permanent. Everything is temporary. So when it comes, I just say, oh, hello again. That emotion of like loneliness, that emotion of like uncomfortableness. You're an extrovert. Sadness. You, you think so? Yeah, definitely. I, 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 I question that. Like I think a little bit I am uh, because I love connecting with other people and, and like including other people and finding creative ways is to include people. Um, at the same time, I love my quiet time. Like I love like being to myself. It's some of my most productive times is when I'm just like to myself. But yeah, I think maybe part of me is an extrovert. And at the same time, I could definitely spend like a few weeks and just like read and just like hang out by myself. Although once I'm in the, the groove of talking to people, I tend to like stay wanting to do, to do that. So mm-hmm. I wonder if it's just like uh um, like a momentum of socializing. And once I get into that, then I love socializing, but there's also, uh, I can, I could get into a momentum of being more introverted. So it's a I little bit, I hate the, it. The, the titles, but yeah, there's little. nothing, I, I'm not introverted at all. Uh, so I really hate this. If it wasn't for, for like this, the video chat and stuff like that, I, I think it would be, you know, very difficult for, for me to deal with all of this. Um, I'm definitely somebody, you know, I'll come in and I'll do my video work, but then, I'll walk down the street, I'll go to a cafe or a bar or something just to, even though I don't know a single person there, I'll either strike up a conversation or maybe I won't. I just like being around other people. So, uh, you know, this time is, is really difficult for extroverts. Uh, yeah, and what, what I, the other thing I noticed is that because I spent a lot more time indoors, I am a lot less likely to strike up random conversations. Like I struck up a random conversation um, when I had to go get takeout the other day, and I realized that there was a little bit more of a hesitation to strike up the conversation. And this is where like self awareness becomes key. Um, but also, um, it's still right now in 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 my box of curiosities. I'm not entirely sure why I was a little bit less social. It could have been that moment. It could have been the ADHD medication. And now it maybe could have changed some of my social behaviors. Um, It could also be just like me having been isolated for um, the past few weeks and not having been out and talked with a lot of people. Maybe it'll take me a little bit more time to warm up to talking to people. So right now it's still like a question in my mind i do think that it's possible for me to be a little bit less um social because of the circumstances you know just like you know being indoors all the time and not not necessarily being indoors I, yeah most of the time i'm indoors every once in a while i'll get some fresh air i want to ask you what are you planning on doing and what are you planning on doing after this is over like what is your 
well, I don't know, do you really need to do anything different? Because most of the artists, I, I, you know, I'm asking, like, what are you doing to reintroduce yourself after this shutdown is over? But you really never went away. Yeah. In fact, I, I, I increased it. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as the coronavirus struck, all of a sudden I was like, hmm, now's my time, you know? Yeah. I, I actually don't feel the exact way that maybe everybody, a lot of other people feel about it. I'm much more of like, um, oh, this is now, I, this, is, this, is, this is bad, but now there's an opportunity for me to really capitalize on this, this like, because people are home. They want to be able to, you know, entertain themselves. They want to feel more connected with the community. And like, that's something that I love to do. I love to create media. I love to connect people with, with other people just throughout the community. Um, that's like the whole purpose of my, my newsletter now is, is like really connect with the, with the people who, who want to read my work. And it gives me an opportunity to grow as a person. Cause then I have to one, formulate my opinions and, and like make sure that they're well educated before I say something and then um, actually publish it which means that people are going to see it they're going to have feedback they're going to reply to me and this is like a it's going to be a positive feedback loop because now um, it's not just in my head it's giving me an outlet and 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 also it's really good because it's demonstrating the knowledge that I have it's a lot it's, it's challenging me to be more thoughtful about those things and at the same time it's promoting me in my work so it's, it's like it's like one of the best things I could be doing is like putting out this newsletter uh, and also like it allows me to give, have another platform for distributing the videos and distributing the podcast that I do because mm -hmm. there is no real um, like one way of doing a newsletter. I could put out like uh, a huge think piece on, you know, potholes or I can just like put out a uh, YouTube embed and send that out and just be like, Hey, here's the latest video that I've, 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 I've dropped, you know, mm -hmm. like that it, it's such a malleable form for me to put out my work. I hope everybody who's watching subscribes, williejames.net, you know, W I L L Y james.net. And like, I think it'll be like a really cool cultural, um, I call it like the cultural campfire, you know, that's like a concept that I just like thought of the other day, the, the wording of like, you know, everybody coming around the campfire and we're just like sharing cultural experiences, sharing thoughts, sharing concepts, sharing opinions. And if, to me, that's really fulfilling. So I'm, I'm really, I'm feeling productive and, and focused. I'm trying to stay that way because I know that all bad things are only temporary and then things go back to good or they change, but it's always um, temporary. Bad is always temporary. So it's good, but you know, when, when things are going bad, just remember at the end of that, this is going to be something good. So if you had something that you want uh, everyone to know, uh, maybe a coping mechanism for, for people out there struggling, uh, and we'll, we'll end with this, what would that be? What, what do you think that people need to know? Or what do you think that people should take from you uh, to, to inspire them in this troubling time? That's a great question. That's a great ending question. I would say the, the, one of the biggest things that has helped me a lot in my life, and I will say well, definitely it has no choice but to change the people who do it, meditating. Meditating every day, even if it's only for five to ten minutes. And what's going to happen over the course of weeks, over the course of months, is just an absolute transformation of who you are, the way you look at the world, the, like the, the, the way you think. And like nobody would ever suspect that just by sitting down and watching the breath. Somehow all these magnificent ben benefits come from it, whether it's like, you know, increased physical health, increased mental health, the, um, the things that were plaguing you of the, like in the past, like your brain getting caught up in something that happened or the brain getting caught up with something that's happening in the future. It happens a lot less when you meditate. So it centers you. And also it, it increases your awareness of what your brain is actually doing and how your body actually feels. And so mindfulness meditation, I, I recommend everybody check out Headspace. Um, I, that's the thing that really helped introduce like the different elements of 
meditation for me, like whether it's noting, whether it's like checking in with your body, doing a body scan. That was like my first introduction to that. And right now I'm, I'm deepening my practice by practicing it more often. Um, so the, the, and also I want to make sure that people understand like there is, there's a common misconception about meditation. You know, they're like, Oh yeah, you know, I, uh, meditation is cool. Like yoga is my meditation or, you know, playing golf is my meditation, but there is only like that. That's not what meditation is. Meditation is like the, 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 the art and the practice of sitting down and, and, you know, with mindfulness meditation is focusing on the breath, seeing the thoughts as they come and not, being behold beholden by those thoughts but instead returning to the breath and allowing those thoughts to just come and go because that that practice of doing that literally changes your entire life in a way that is hard to communicate casually it's hard to just tell somebody hey you know you know that thing that you're feeling it, it doesn't need to take you over as much as it is you know if you practice meditation, like your whole life changes and it, it requires a certain amount of consistency in the practice and doing it over time. And it, I, I, if everybody does that, they will be, it will shock them how big of a change it will make. And sometimes they don't, they're not the first ones to notice it. Sometimes it's the people around them who notice it. So that would be the one takeaway I would hope people get. It's not even just fault. Like if you don't take anything, if you don't, subscribe to my newsletter. If you don't watch, listen to my podcast, if you don't watch my videos, take up meditation in your free time, learn about mindfulness meditation because it will literally change you. This has basically just been a big conversation uh, about you uh, pushing me into the stuff that you've been pushing me into <laughs> all this conversation for the last uh, several weeks. <laughs> it's one of the, it's, it's, it's like, I, I, I hope everybody like takes hold of these things because like it is so valuable of a thing like you know like like the our ability to take care of ourselves it changes the way we take care of other people as well and we always put on our own face mask before we put on other people's you know to take that airplane analogy that's often used the um, it's so like when i see a lot of um a lot of people having misconceptions and once you practice like meditation especially um you start realizing in the language of other people some of the misconceptions that they have and i think anybody who's experienced knowledge in anything can relate to that where it's like you hear somebody who doesn't understand it and you're like oh they misunderstand something but the time it'll take me to communicate that to the other person will be a it'll take a long time for them to get the concept so that's exactly how it is for meditation and a, a lot of other things whether it's like going to um a, a, a psychiatrist and like talking or going to a doctor and talking about adhd or anything else like these are really important topics um that are very difficult for people to like sim simply understand it's like when you say, oh, you no, know, go to a therapist or go to like, it's, it's easy for people to be like, oh yeah, well, how would they help me? Cause that's exactly how I thought. Like I used to think like that. I used to be like, oh, well, you know, if I just go to, let's say a therapist and they like, I'll just talk out my thoughts or whatever. And then they'll, they'll just repeat it back to me. I'm like, how does that help? But the science behind it is solid. It is absolutely solid and it works. And it's one of the most effective ways, like with therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy is one of the most effective treatments for people dealing with any kind of mental thing, you know? So, or at least a lot, say a lot of different mental things. There's some there's certain therapies that are better for other things, but you know, I, I take care of yourself. <laughs> and that's the message for the viewers and everybody, so. Explore some of the region's most dynamic murals in one of the most fascinating venues with the Society to Preserve the Milville Murals of Max Ivanka. The Society works with the St. Nicholas Croatian Catholic Church to provide tours of the 25 murals painted on the church sanctuary walls. A mixture of religious and social commentary can be found with inspirations from World War II. What would it be like growing up in a church surrounded in these murals? We asked docent manager and church attendee, Andrew Stefanik. You'd always be finding something new when you were, even when you were sitting here during mass or during other ceremonies. Um, and you'd maybe you'd lose track of what, of mass and you would, your eyes would wander about, about the murals and you would find something new. And even to this day, every time I come in here, 
I find something new in the murals. Is there anything a visitor observed that's new to Andrew? Absolutely, there are so many. Um, almost every time, and I would say the best tours, are when somebody comes in and discovers something new or points something out new to me. And I would say my favorite parts about the tours that I give is the information that I share that I've gotten from others and gotten from visitors that I were no experts or had no specific expertise, but just their attention was drawn to something specific. Learn how these iconic murals connect you to the past and discover what they could teach you about the present with a tour from the Society to Preserve the Millville Murals of Max Ivanka. Find out more at vankamurals.org. Thank you for listening to COVID Conversations, a special series for PGH Museums, produced and edited by me, Brian Crawford. Support PGH Museums by joining our membership program at pghmuseums.org slash join. Our music is Energy 2013 by Sasha Endy and can be found at filmmusic.io and licensed under the Creative Commons. Let us know how you're keeping your spark in these trying times. Email me at brian at pghmuseums.org. Stay safe, keep your distance, and keep creating.